In this video, we're going to talk about the groups functionality in Darktable. And I was able to live happily without really using groups at all for years, but recently I have been forced into using them, uh, and I'm going to show you what they're, they can be good for. Specifically, you need to understand how groups work if you're going to use a raw plus JPEG type of workflow. So in this group test folder, I have a number of raw files and JPEGs. When I would shoot these, I would shoot in raw plus JPEG mode and you end up with a directory with uh, raw files and JPEGs both. Add these to your library. So we are going to bring these in Add to library. When these come in, since they have file names that have the same base file name, they come in automatically grouped together. What Darktable shows you is just the group leader, and that's because this box right here is highlighted. It's in group mode. If I, un if I click this and unhighlight it, now you can see um, the raw file and the JPEG they're grouped together and the way that you can tell that is you can see a very faint yellow outline that goes around these two pictures that are in the group. Um, if I move to this one, the faint yellow outline goes around this picture and the JPEG that's down here. And then if I go here, that outline moves along. When you move around in a collection of pictures, that faint yellow outline moves with it to show that things are grouped together. If I go to this first uh, group, these little icons that are here also indicate that they're grouped together. So within this two picture group, if I hover over this one, it says that there are two grouped images and the one that I'm on right now is the leader of the group. And if I go over to this one and hover over it, this one, if I click on this icon, this JPEG will become the leader of the group. When it says leader of the group, what that means is when you click on this button up here that says collapse grouped images, the leader is what is shown. So now, since I click that, it collapsed that group down. You can see now the that yellow border is just around this single image, and it's, it's around the leader, which is the ARW. In this mode, if I click on this, it will expand the group. So there is the, the raw file and the JPEG. And if I were to click on that button, now the JPEG is the, is the leader. And if I click on it again, it will shrink it down and it shows the group leader and it's the JPEG now. So now I'm gonna open it back up again. I'm gonna click on this. And then when I click on this again, it'll shrink down. This button expands and collapses all of the groups in your collection, but when you are in that mode, clicking on the group leader expands and collapses just that one group. Okay, so what is this grouping functionality good for? Let's start by sorting everything by file name. And I have this one group expanded, if I click on the group leader, the, AR, the raw file, and I hit three, it rates it three stars. But it does not rate the JPEG. So I'm gonna hit zero to reset that one. If I click on the JPEG and hit three, it just rates the JPEG three stars, not the, the raw file. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna click this back to zero. But if this is collapsed, like this, and it's just so showing the group leader. If I click three, you can see that it gives it three stars. Now if I expand this group, they both have the same rating, which is useful when you're going through and calling your pictures. You can see that, that by collapsing everything down and giving ratings to just the, the group leader, it will um, give ratings to both things at the same time. And normally, if you were doing your culling looking at the raw files, then you wouldn't even need to do this. You could just have the raw files. You wouldn't need the JPEGs at all. But as I've explained in one of my other videos, the functionality where you use 
this preview mode to preview your raw files and rate them is broken in that it doesn't show the embedded JPEG, it just shows the raw file. So if I use my right arrow key and go to the next one, it's not showing you the nice looking JPEG or the nice embedded JPEG. It's showing you the nasty raw file, which oftentimes has artifacts in it, like this one, where this, uh, where there's clipping in the whites, it gives you artifacts. You don't want to show these raw images to your clients in the previewing. Um, you want to show them to JPEGs instead. Let's look how grouping can help you rate your pictures when you shoot in RAW and JPEG. We have a directory that has RAW files and JPEGs. None of them are rated, and we will add these to our library. And they come in, there's the RAW, there's the JPEG. They automatically come in as a group because the base file name is the same. And we can collapse those by pushing the button. And when we collapse them, we would see the raw file. And if the preview functionality worked properly for the raw files, we could go right into the uh, full screen preview and go through these. But we've already established that if you do that with the raw file as the group leader, the pictures look horrible. So what we need to do is expand that open and we're going to hit control a to select everything in the directory and we go over to the lewis script that allows us to change the group leader so we're going to select a new group leader and set it to jpeg and when we hit execute now all of these groups have been changed so that the group leaders are the jpegs and if you collapse the groups now you see the JPEGs. And if we select the first one, we can go into our full screen preview. And now you're looking at the JPEGs. So when you're sitting down with a client, you can go through these and rate them. And let's just say that we rate this one three, the next one four, the next one five, the next one three, four, five, three, four, five three, four, five, three, four, five. And then we hit escape to go back to our uh, file manager layout. And you can see the groups are now three, four, five. And if we expand out the groups, both the raw file and the JPEG have the same rating. So at this point, you can work on the raw files and if we say that we want to sort by rating that pulls all of the highest rated images to the top and if you only want to see the raw files here you can come over to this filter and say uh, ARW and when you do that there now you're just looking at the raw files um, in fact at this point, we really don't even need those JPEGs anymore. We could clear this filter so that we're seeing everything. And we could um, come over here and look at just the JPEGs. We could select all of these and just delete them. In this case, I don't want to delete the files entirely. I'm just going to remove them from my image library. That will only leave behind the raw files. At this point, I could go back to my uh, original directory here and I could delete the JPEGs out of here too because I just don't need them anymore. Um, but I'll leave that up to your discretion as to whether or not you would want to do that. So this workflow is the best, most efficient that I have been able to come up with given the limitations of what Darktable can do right now. Before I came up with this, what I was doing was separating my raw files and my JPEGs into two separate directories and just opening the JPEGs by themselves and doing the ratings. And you can see that that's what I did with this job. Um, in the JPEG directory, I have the JPEGs and Let's see, the sidecar files that have all of the ratings in them and the raw files in this one aren't even rated at all. 
And the next thing I'm going to show you how to do in my next video is how to copy the ratings from the JPEG files to the RAW files if you have gone down this path.